um, it's important to always think about using all of the the fruit or vegetable if possible so that we don't we can reduce waste and you, we can use certain things to flavor other foods and um, and often all the parts of fruits and vegetables have lots of vitamins and minerals so um, I, I'm gonna get started uh, I'm gonna just start by just cutting up a few vegetables and um, I mean I, maybe a lot of you have roasted vegetables in the oven and maybe some of you have never done that before uh, some sometimes um, uh, you just don't know how to go about it so and sometimes you 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 see a vegetable and you have no idea what to do with it so maybe I'll start there I'm gonna start with a squash that um, you know it's often used in Mexican cooking and it's called it's a type of squash but it kind of looks like a giant green pear uh, it's called a chayote squash. And um, I mean, it's, maybe it looks a little intimidating, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna prepare a few vegetables and, and uh, I'm gonna cut them up and show you what I'm, what, how I would eat them. Um, um, so I'm gonna start peeling. Now, you don't necessarily have to peel this one. Um, it's a, the, the, skin, the skins are quite, quite thin, um, but I'm gonna, I'm pretty much saving all my skins to make a vegetable stock, which is a, a great way to use up any peels that you have. Um, you can roast them, you can roast all the peels ahead of time, or you can just save them in a bag or a sealed container in your freezer. And whenever you 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 um, build up, you know, maybe four four or so cups of vegetable peels, then I would throw them in a pot with some water and maybe some bay leaves, a couple of cloves of garlic. And, uh, and just cook them for an hour or so or two. Um, okay, so here we go. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna peel a few vegetables at one time so that I don't have to keep doing it. So there's the, the, uh, the chayote squash. Um, I'm gonna peel maybe, I have, a, I have a, just a, a I, I made some squash soup and I have a leftover piece of uh, butternut squash. So this is really, really hard. And we, we uh, you have to be careful cutting this one. Um, always remember holding your knife You've got a good grip and you have your, your hand with your fingertips curled under uh, and the blade of the knife is gonna just, just hit your knuckle and you will, you will uh, not cut the tips of your fingers. And it's always important to do that when you're cutting food. So this is a very, very hard uh, skin. And um, what I'm also trying to do while, while, I'm, while I'm, I'm gonna use a knife, a knife to peel this. What I'm also showing you too is I'm, I'm sort of gonna, I'm, I'm peeling different types of colors uh, of vegetables because every food group, uh, like fruit and vegetable food group, I should say, um, they all offer different types, oops, very hard, different types of vitamins and minerals. So if, you, if you're able to eat a variety uh, as often as you can, you'll, you'll have all, the, all the, ben the benefits of all the different vitamins and minerals uh, that keep us um, keep us all very healthy um, there we go all right so now I've got peeled this I peeled the squash uh, what else do I have here I have a sweet potato um, I don't always peel sweet potatoes because I think this I mean there's a lot of vitamin C in this skin but as I said I'm gonna be using I'm gonna be using these peels and um, sorry I've got this peeler that's not real anyway I'll just do this as quick as I can oops Okay. All right, so peel this up. And I'm gonna use a few other uh, colors that I have here um, of vegetables. Okay, there we go. Okay, maybe I'll just trim this a little bit with my knife here. Okay. There we go. Excellent, so I've got couple of colors going. Um, I have a potato as well um, and we're going to give this a quick peel as well. Okay. I just want to, as, as I said, the sweet potato and the potatoes, um, I often leave them on when I roast them. But I just thought I would show you um, what you can do with peels. So I have a whole bunch of peels that I, I, I from this week actually. Okay. I okay. think we have a quick question, Chef. Lucas has his hand up, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take him off mute so he can ask. Okay. What's the question? I have no question. Oh, okay. 
No problem. Oh, who, who it looked like you had put your hand up. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so I'm just going to do a few vegetables. I don't need too many. Um, so in this bowl here, um, you can see that I've got onion skins. Oh, I'm going to cut up the rest of that onion. I have onion skins. I've got garlic skins, potatoes, sweet potatoes, the, the skin from the chayote squash. I'm saving all those for my vegetable stock. And, and I always have vegetable stock because I eat a lot of vegetables. Um, so I'll just put this down here. And, and also, um, so here, I'll just save this as well. There's the skin of the red onion. So I'm gonna use a, this onion. Um, I had it left over in the fridge. Throw that in there. So when you're gonna roast vegetables, um, vegetables have a lot of water in them. Um, so um, our goal today is to, to to learn to understand um, how uh, the best way to retain the moisture while we're roasting. So uh, let's see, I have the red onions right here. Um, get rid of that. So the, the, I feel that the best way to retain the moisture in, in, when ro roasting vegetables, um, as I said, it doesn't matter how you cut them, as long as you cut them the same size. That's the most important part. If you're like for example, if you're cooking really hard vegetables, maybe like, you know, carrots, you know, um, uh, you could cut them a little bit bigger and parsnips, um, like squash tends to, and sweet potatoes tend to cook a little faster. So you could make the, the carrots and the parsnips, the really hard vegetables, slightly smaller so they cook relatively the same, the same at the same time, if you're gonna have them all together on a mixed tray. I often cook my vegetables separately. Like I'll just put, you know, the carrots on one side, sweet potatoes in the middle, and if one's done before the other, I just take it out of the oven with my oven mitts and I just use my spatula to take off the cooked vegetables and then throw it back in the oven. So, so I'm just gonna show you, just to, I'm just gonna cut these into cubes. This is the size. Uh, I'm just gonna leave them right here on a plate. Excuse me. Okay. I have a plate. I have a plate. All right, okay, so let's put them right here. So I've got my potatoes cut up. Um, all right. And I'm gonna cut up some of the squash. Right down the center, it's really hard. Uh, so I'm gonna go right down the center. I mean, squash, it seems very hard, but they actually get very soft in the oven uh, really quickly. Okay, so we've got squash. I'm just gonna move this to the side. I don't need to do all of it right now. Okay, sorry. And here's the chayote squash. So let's cut this open and see. Uh, see. So this is what it looks like on the inside. There's sort of like a big stone, like a pit in the in the right in the middle there. So I'm just gonna just cut that out. Okay. And, Mm. It has a really, it has a really fresh taste, like really fresh watery taste, sort of like a, an unsweet Asian pear, if you've ever had one of those. Um, it, and I, I also know that when you roast these, it takes on the flavors that you give it as well. It's a very pleasant taste. You can eat it raw in salads as well. It's, uh, it's very fresh, really crunchy. I'm eating more like jicama. If you have, I don't have one with me here today, but I'll, I'll maybe have one for another week. Um, so I'm just gonna cut this into a couple of pieces too. Okay. Um, I know that making a roasted, roasted, uh, roasted uh, chayote squash uh, goes really nicely with a, toma a green salsa, like a tomatilla salsa, in, um, if you make tacos with them, it's really delicious. Just, it just, when you cook it, it just gives it, you know, when everything starts to caramelize, it just changes the taste of, 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 uh, of the, it just, it, it adds so, so many, uh, um, uh, it adds a, a lot of depth and flavor. Okay, so I have all my things here. Now, I think on oh, my sweet potato, I've got a little piece of sweet potato. Okay, put that over there. Okay, so uh, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a mixed, uh, mixed vegetables. I'm not going to cook them all separately today. Okay, so I've got everything here. Um, I guess I could do this. I could do it right here on this plate. So I'm going to add a little bit of oil. Um, I have 
a few different types of oil. I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil to this. And I know I have the amount in the recipe there for you. Okay, I don't need that one. Now, um, if I was roasting some of these things separately, <clears throat> you know, it's vegetables like, uh, oh, I didn't do the carrots, okay. Uh, like squash, sweet potato, you could add a little bit of lime juice and some honey uh, to those vegetables, which I, I'm gonna do right now. I have some honey right here. We'll just sort of, I'll keep, maybe I'll keep them a little bit separate on the tray. Um, we're gonna add some salt and pepper, of course. You have to add a little salt and pepper to these things before you roast them. Okay, so I'm gonna put them on the tray. Yeah. Are there, what other kinds of vegetables might people be able to use in this if they don't have some of these at home? Uh, parsnips, carrots, uh, parsnips, carrots, uh, turnips, different types of turnip. Uh, there's a vegetable I wanted to uh, have today, um, but I, I don't have it. Uh, last week we used some kohlrabi um, greens and the bottom uh, of the vegetables have these two white sort of hard bulbs. So all you need to do with kohlrabi is just, just take the skin off and cut it up exactly like this and treat it exactly the same way. Olive oil, salt, pepper. Um, as I said, you, with that vegetable too, you could add a little honey. Uh, a little bit of citrus, as I said, is nice uh, as well. I, I kind of like lime and lemon with sweet potatoes and squash, the squash, the different types of squash. Um, so anyway, we're just going to mix all this together. So we've got all the olive oil, the salt and pepper. We're just going to lay it all out. Now really, I, you, you could put it in a bowl and do this. I just sort of had them on a plate already. So I'm not going to bother um, dirtying another bowl. Okay, so we can just, just mix this all together. I'm going to add my red onions as well in pieces. There we go. We have some red onions. Now you don't have to, as I said, I, I'm showing you the, the way that I feel they'll keep them the, the, the it'll keep the, the vegetables uh, as moist as possible. Now I often, sorry, I, I often, um, sorry, I often just throw my vegetables right into the oven and I do it on high heat, but I'm watching them. So you could do, you could do that as well um, on high heat and it cooks it rather quickly. So if you keep your eye on it, it, it it's fine to roast them without covering them. But today I just wanted to show you that. So um, like I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna put a, hold on. I got a little lime here, let's put a little lime on this. It's gonna be fine with all these vegetables. Um, there we go, a little bit of lime juice. Don't have to do that. I have some herbs right here. Since I'm gonna be covering these for 10 to 15 minutes, um, I'm, gonna put, I'm gonna put some herbs that I had from the garden. So I have a little bit of rosemary, some thyme, there we go, move that over. Okay, so now I'm just gonna cover them. As I said, you don't have to cover them. But I, as I said, it, it, it's, a, it's a nice, I don't, um, it's nice if you have a pan, like a raised pan that has like a lid. That way you don't have to use um, like foil or anything like that. So, so I'm just gonna put foil on this. So it's probably gonna take Depending on how, how, your, how hot your oven is, everybody's oven is different. But everything cooks differently in everybody's, uh, everybody's oven. <laughs> so it should take about 40 minutes or so. Um, so I'm going to pop these in. There we go. I'm gonna, I just popped them in the oven right over here. Um, now, I have roasted a, a, a small pan of vegetables already. I actually, these are different vegetables than the one I just put in there. <laughs> but um, I roasted some, I don't know if you can see this. I've roasted pieces of carrot, uh, parsnips, and squash. And um, so what I did was I, uh, after the first 10 to 15 minutes of cooking, soon as you have, to, you have to kind of like peek into the, peek under the, um, under the foil. If you see that the, the, the moisture is bubbling, that's when you should take the lid off. Um, you have to let it get to that point and then remove the lid and let it go until, as you can see, it's kind of, you might have to flip them over halfway through, um, but it's just, and you can let them go a little bit further than this too. They're just lightly, lightly, um, if you can see, they're lightly charred on, on both sides and, and it's it, 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 a little bit crispy. 
And because you steamed with the herbs, you're gonna get a really nice flavor. And you can use these vegetables for salads, for wraps, um, um, for all kinds of different things. Um, side dishes for dinner all week, you could do it ahead of time. And it's just a, it's kind of just a good technique to, to know and have confidence um, to, to roast vegetables. Because really, the, it's, the technique is almost the same for all the vegetables. So it just depends on the size. And there's so many different aromatic flavors, different types of herbs you can add to it. Um, yeah, so um, that's what I want to talk about um, with our vegetables here. Um, I wonder, so. we, I know we have a couple of people cooking at home and just because of the time, we might not see our finished product, but no, if I, you want to no, show us what you're, what you're putting into the oven. Yeah, if you want to take some time and let's see how far you're, 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 you've gotten. Or if anybody wants to ask questions at this point. And you can feel free to take yourself off mute if you want to show us. I know Crystal and Acacia are showing us their, their tray. It looks so good. Excellent. I'm oh, just typing in. Oh, Eli, no, I can't. Sorry. Eli, if you have a question, go ahead. My son wants to ask why you guys wanted to organize this for us. Oh. Yeah. Chipper uh, Julia, we have our trays ready. Am I answering? Okay, we have our trays ready. Um, okay, we're gonna, why don't we see Marcus's tray and then I'll answer the other question just after we, we see Marcus's tray. All right. I'm, I'm gonna get something ready for the... Uh, there you go. Feel free to show us, Marcus. Oh. Woohoo! There we go. Let's see. see. Uh, we can't see it. No, it doesn't show on the camera. Okay. Uh, Alex, <laughs> they can't see anything. Hold on. We're making trades up. We Hold have on, the on, oven preheated, Sonia. We have the oven preheated. <laughs> they want to see Marcus's tray, but they can't see it. You can also take a picture and send it in after. No, no pressure. Okay, that's a great idea. Yeah, I'll put, put my email in the chat and, and folks can, you can always send your finished product and we can share it so everyone can see each other's creations. That's fine. Okay. Um, so I'll just answer the other question, which is why did we want to organize this program? Can I take a picture? It's okay. It's okay. We'll do it up. We're making the, we have a preheated, preheated time. So yeah, just in regards to the other question, we wanted to organize this program um, because we we wanted to be able to share kind of food with you. I think um, just really important way to connect. We know we're all kind of disconnected. We miss everyone. And we know food is such a great way to connect with each other. So I think that would be the main reason why, um, at least for from my perspective. I don't know if Chef wants to add anything. Um, yeah, I was really excited to be able to connect with all the members and the families. Um, you know, as you know, we really miss everybody, and and I really love the idea of being able to to share some of what I some what I know um, with all of you, uh, just to give people more skills. Um, uh, sometimes it's, people are really busy, or you just don't have time to to figure out how to make things and. Um, yeah, I, so I'm just really happy to, to just to be able to show you some some cooking skills. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there is one more question. Why do we add rosemary and thyme to the veggies? So I'm just offering, I'm just getting, I want people to think about, um, you know, uh, how to incorporate aromatic herbs and, and, and into, into your meals. If it, 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 it Really, roasting vegetables, all you really need is some oil, some salt, some pepper. That's all you really need. Um, just that they offer, uh, as I said, I have, I have some uh, growing, so uh, it just offers uh, another layer of flavor. Herbs and citrus and things like that, they just, they add, they just add uh, more layers of flavor as well. And they all actually have their own um, um, nutritional um, uh, components. Uh, like citrus, you know, uh, I squeeze some lime juice on those vegetables. 
uh, citrus fruits are very high in vitamin C. Uh, really good citrus fruits are really good for um, has lots of collagen and it's really good for your your skin. Fights off flu-like symptoms and helps actually it, um, citrus fruits uh, uh, help you absorb iron from other foods, which maybe not everybody knows that. So you know it's good to have these little thing, little extra ways to add more vitamins and nutrients to your meals. Great. Um, I don't see any other questions for now. So if you want to pick back up. Absolutely. Um, so um, I, I wanted to make a dressing using citrus fruits. So I, that's what you've seen, this recipe that I provided. Um, now there's a lot of room for variation with, with, first of all, with salad dressing. There's lots of variations and you just have to be sort of go ahead and try it and use your own taste buds to figure out if things are too sour, or too sweet, or too salty, or uh, you know, not enough flavor. So, um, you know, um, for example, in this dressing, uh, sometimes you, know, you have big oranges like this, and you, know, you, you don't know until you cut into it about how juicy it's gonna be, right? So, um, I, I, tend to, I tend to like, uh, I'm gonna use a smaller orange in my dressing today. Uh, because I kind of like a more prominent lemon flavor. And with this recipe that I provided, you can use all lemon juice. You don't have to have any orange or lime or anything. Or if you like it, you don't have to, you could just use, or grapefruits, you could add a grapefruit. Um, or it could be just grapefruit. Or you want to make a lime dressing. So anyway, the combination is really nice. So, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and maybe uh, start on this, this uh, dressing. So um, I have two types of graters here, and they both work fine. Um, so if you, if you have a, a, an immersion blender, like a hand blender, it, this works really well for, you know, with this. But you could do it by hand. If you have like a microplane or like a fine grater like this, you know, even if you had to chop the, 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 the rind of the, a little bit um, just to get it real small, even though you've already grated it real small, sometimes uh, a trick I find for certain things that I make, I'll, I'll, I'll zest everything and then I'll just use my knife, I'll zest everything and then I'll just, just go over the zest, the zested portion like this. Just really, so then it's really, really super fine and then you, you know, it's very, very smooth. So you don't bite into pieces of, of brine. But these microplanes do a really great job. So I'm just gonna show you how, I mean, this, this won't take long. I, I mean, I can, I can, and I only wanna, and I only want the zest of the, the yellow part even though I know that the white part is healthy and you can probably eat it. Um, but sometimes in a raw salad dressing, it just sometimes makes things bitter. So I'm just gonna make sure just to get the, just the yellow, the yellow skin, um, where all the great flavor and oil is in, is in that. I add lemon zest to so many things, baked goods, salad dressings, um, marinades from fish all the time or chicken. I'm always adding the, the zest of things to, you know, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna maybe cook a chicken breast or barbecue something. Uh, I often put like garlic and, and rinds of, of uh, citrus fruits. Onions is a, is a good aromatic too. Herbs, if you're gonna marinate, you know, fish and meat and all that kind of stuff. So here we go. I do the same for the lime. Now the lime, I'm just, be careful not to get, just wanna get the outside. I just wanna get the outside of this one. So I'll go real fast here. Okay. All right. And, you know, feel free to experiment. You, you know, you, you may want to just try, well, let's, you know, maybe just mostly lemon and a little bit of lime and orange. You know, you don't, so you can do all kinds of different co combinations. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna, whoops. Done. I'm just, I'm not, I, I think I'm going to do it by hand. I think I'm going to do it by hand. I'm not going to use a hand immersion blender because there, so put it in a bowl. We're going to put that into a bowl for now. I'm just going to cut these into pieces here, just like that. Now, I happen to have a little tiny, this little tiny thing that I'm going to use right now. Um, 
Wait, oh, you know what? Maybe I'll just do it for another bowl and then I'll, I'll use this. Excuse me. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm going to take my fork. And now I, I don't have a juicer here where I am. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be careful with this fork. I'm going to use my hand and the fork like a juicer. So you just have to be careful you don't go too far this way because you don't want it to go into your hand, right? So you basically, you want to just twist and turn and you're scraping the sides. So if you can see what I'm doing. I'm squeezing at the same time. Now you can just do it with your hands and not bother with the fork, but it just kind of speeds it up a little bit for me. Um, okay. All right. So this is a very juicy lemon. So it's going to be predominantly a lemon vinaigrette. Okay. All right. Okay. An orange. What are some types of salads that you might use this vinaigrette on? Um, it goes really well with things like with corn, like a, a black bean salad, um, uh, with, um, corn with black bean salad with corn niblets in it um seafood salads if you have like bits pieces of uh shrimps and things like that um it goes really well with a lot of different vegetables sorry it, it goes really really well with a lot of different flavors um especially like roasted vegetables it's sort of why i, I it, it tastes really nice like a, a beet salad uh, a roasted beet salad um i have some beets in the oven i'll show you i'm roasting some in some foil so I'll show you, and I'll maybe have time, I'll tell you how I did that. It goes really nicely um, uh, with like chickpea salads, um, with, you know, maybe celery, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of this dressing, citrus dressing. Um, even even um, like uh, cooked, cooked seafood, cooked meats, different kinds of meat, um, you can add it to your whatever vegetables you're serving uh, or on the side you can just put a little bit of dressing on top um, or just over leafy greens it's it, it's delicious okay so i've got my juice and i've got this sieve so i'm just gonna it's a very tiny one i just want to get all the seeds out of there okay that's done so i'm going to take my whisk now i have a couple of things here i know uh, I think I mentioned the honey. I mean, the, the mustard. Sorry, I just went out of the oh. house. Oh, Carmen? Carmen? So, while so, Chef is um, getting reset up there, um, we'll take a quick break for trivia. Um, so, I've just launched a trivia question, um, which you should be able to see. And the question is true or false? Canada's food guide recommends that half of your plate come from vegetables, one quarter from protein and one quarter from whole grains. So I see one answer no. coming in. Any other answers? Oh, four people have went? answered. Five. Can't see anything. Oh God. So uh, it looks like 50% of people have voted and everyone voted true, which is the right answer. Um, so yeah, th this is what's called the plate method um, by the Canada Food Guide. And really it just helps us understand portion sizes a little bit better rather than thinking of like, is my fist a portion size? You just think about filling half of your plate with um, fruits and vegetables and whole grains. Uh, so great that everybody seems to know their stuff. Um, amazing. Uh, and I'm going to do a second trivia question. Let's see if I can get it to go. Okay. Oh, no, it won't let me go. But I will ask you the trivia question in the chat, which is, um, so we're focusing on fruits and vegetables today. Um, when an apple gets bruised or cut, what might be some of the reasons why it turns brown? 
Um, so is it A, because it's exposed to ox oxygen, B, because of the pressure to the fruit, or C, because apples go rotten quickly? C. So there's somebody guess C. Any else, anyone else want to guess your, your answers? A, exposed to oxygen, were two votes. Exposed to oxygen, we don't have the quiz on our screen. The first question oh. showed up, but this one's not. Okay. I think meant a lot of people are voting oxygen. And, oh, one person voted C, apples go rotten quickly. So the right answer is exposed to oxygen. So um, what this does is it triggers an enzyme that uh, oxidizes the apple surface, um, which happens really quickly. Um, you probably notice when you cut up an apple that happens. Um, so some different tricks you can try is you can slice and store the fruit in water. You can brush or dip sliced apples in lemon juice um, or store them in water with lemon juice. So there are some tricks um, that you can use to stop the apple from, from oxidizing. But yeah, a lot of people had the right answer because it's exposed to oxygen. Well done, guys. Um, so I'm going to mute myself now and hand it over to Chef because I think she's got herself set up again. Yes, uh, yes, thank you. Sorry about that. It, anyway, okay. So, all right, back to the dressing. <laughs> um, all right, so we've got the citrus, uh, we've got the, the citrus uh, juice and the zest in the bowl. And I, I know I might not have added any recipe, but I'm going to add just a tiny bit of garlic here. So a little bit of garlic right into this dressing. We're going to do that. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of mustard, Dijon mustard. Not necessary, um, but it's gonna it's gonna help uh, create an emulsion uh, and maybe keep the dressing stable so that it doesn't separate. But it's okay if the dressing separates a homemade dressing because uh, that's what happens unless you 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 bind it with with something like Dijon mustard or an egg yolk. So um, today I'm gonna use some Dijon mustard. So I have some right here. I'm gonna put maybe like a teaspoon or so right in there. Not too much because I don't want it to taste like just just like mustard. But you, you won't. It, it just gives it just a nice flavor. I'm gonna put a little bit of honey as well. Just put a little bit of honey in there. Okay, and you know, it's to, it's to taste, to be honest. So you have to just, I, I would always go with uh, the least amount of something. And then it, if you taste it and you think, oh, it's too sour for me, then you can at least add something um, to it as opposed to, you know, if you put too much salt, too much pepper, it's gonna be, you know, too salty or too pepper. <laughs> so there we go. All right, just gonna give this a little whisk. So I get this all mixed up together in this bowl, and you can use a blender, a hand, you know, a whatever food processor to bake these things. Blender works really well. Uh, I just think I'll do it by hand. Okay, all right. So I'm going to add a little bit of oil to this. Um, you can use uh, vegetable oil, canola oil, um, a combination of both um, as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and start slowly, and I'm just going to keep whisking just so that the um, that the oil and the and the citrus juice uh, bind together along with the Dijon mustard. And you know, in, in cases like this, you can also just add, you know, partial oil and, and if it still seems too thin to you, you can always add, you know, a little bit of sour cream or mayonnaise uh, as well. And it just, it'll bind it as well, right? Okay, so this is actually getting a little quite thick. How do you add. know how much oil to add? Pardon me? How do you know how much oil to add? Well, you know, usually, um, I haven't added vinegar yet, so I'm gonna add some vinegar. Um, you know, in general, if you, you, would, you, would, you would think about adding one part of vinegar to three parts of uh, oil. That's a very general, it doesn't, so it doesn't matter what measurement, tablespoon, you know, whatever you're using. Um, so I kind of stick to that. Uh, but I think in this case, because I'm using uh, juice, uh, I, I think you might want to, you might want to, you might want to use uh, less oil than that measurement. You'd have more citrus juice than the three to one. So maybe a like a two to like a let's say one part one part citrus juice uh, with a little bit of and that could maybe that could include the vinegar 
to maybe two parts oil. Does that make sense? Like one part, yeah, like a, like a mix, a mix yeah. of citrus and vinegar, and then two parts oil. Yeah, but the thing is, what, what's 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 not um, the reason why I'm showing you the citrus dressing is because you kind of have to rely rely a little bit on your taste, the, the way you taste things as well. Um, you're going to get fruit that's, you know, uh, I guess I, I like to use up the whole thing instead of just using parts of fruits, unless you're going to eat it, I suppose. Um, I, I, like, I, what I've done here, I, I, just adding that little tiny bit of mustard, it's created a nice, thick, uh, fairly thick dressing. Um, and I haven't even added any vinegar yet. So uh, I don't think I'm, I, I think because I, now that I'm tasting it, it doesn't, I don't, sometimes I add a little bit of vinegar with the citrus fruits, but it, the, the fruits were very tart, to be honest. So the honey was a nice balance for it. I mean, really, it, three to one is the, is, the, is the universal sort of rule, even if, it's, even if it is citrus and not vinegar. But I find that vinegar is, is so, much, so much stronger than citrus fruits that you could have more citrus juice in a dressing rather than um, uh, vinegar. Okay, so now I've got my vegetables here. My roasted vegetables, and um, I'm going to put a little bit of this dressing on top. You can see, I mean, I could have made this a little bit thicker, but I think it's just perfect. It's it's got a nice balance. It's it's I can taste the lemon, I can taste the orange. Um, it's very bright. The citrus, the zest of the fruits, really give it another depth of citrus flavor. Um, it's a, and it, as I said, it goes with so many different foods. Uh, grain salads. Let's say you've got leftover barley or quinoa in your fridge, or your chickpeas or black beans or you know navy beans. You could always just chop up some little bit of onion, red onion or onion, some celery, a little bit of garlic, and put a little bit of dressing um, with the beans and that makes a lovely salad along with some grains if you have any leftover grains. Uh, so I'm just gonna put, I'm gonna spoon a little bit over over top. There we go. This is gonna be a side dish for um, our dinner tonight. There we go. Amazing. And you would add that once the vegetables are all done, right? Yeah, at the end. Yeah. Yeah. At the when the, when the vegetables come out of the oven and you maybe you could put them out just like this or put them on a nice platter and yeah, and put it right on the table. And it's delicious. There you go. Amazing. Um, I wonder if anybody made that dressing um, along with us, um, or if anybody has questions about the dressing and what Chef has made so far. You can feel free to write in the chat, or you can take yourself off mute now. No, no worries. Um, I know that a few people have addressed. Um, uh, they, they were interested to learn how to uh, maybe make uh, some salad rolls and a bean salad. So I'm definitely going to address that uh, in one of our next classes. Um, but I also want to point out that uh, and I thought and I thought pointing out about the, the lettuce wraps was a really good one, especially for today's class. Um, uh, really, if you just take some, you know, raw carrots and cucumbers any kind of pepper, red peppers, green peppers, um, even a mango. Uh, just take a few piece slices of a mango. Um, you could wrap all that into a, a uh, make that into a lettuce wrap with a little bit of dressing like this or um, other types of dressings, which I will show you more um, as the weeks go on. So, so I uh, definitely get a variety of, of uh, different vegetables and fruits in a lettuce wrap, which really helps with your, get your five a day. Um, I have some other ideas. I mean, everyone likes to make smoothies, maybe a banana smoothie in the morning, possibly with a little vanilla, tiny, tiny drop of vanilla. You could add like a li little bit of uh, actually uncooked oats, just a little bit to bind it, not very much, uh, with your frozen banana, if you, if you think ahead to freeze them. Um, and also just a small handful of raw spinach. 
you know what you get it just adds it adds to your 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 vitamin and nutrient uh, um, uh, what do you call it uh, it adds to your daily intake of those things and and yeah so it's really it's great it's a great idea to be to know what to be able to add to your to your normal meals or your snacks just to get that extra boost of, of uh, you know nutrients and vitamins we had a good question pop up in the chat, which is, what is a good way to prepare chicken with these veggies? Ooh, well, um, so hmm, that's a, there's so many good ways to prepare chicken. Um, I mean, okay, let's say if you have a whole chicken, let's say you're roasting a whole chicken, which is kind of a fast way to do it because then you don't have to cut it off or anything like that. So if you have a whole chicken, for example, you could take a lemon and maybe an onion or, or like a little piece of an onion, some of a lemon, and take a little bit of rosemary right here, a little, if you had it, you don't have to use it, but if you had it, a little bit of thyme, chop that, roughly chop everything together. Um, you might just want to take the, the, pea, the skin off the onion, but definitely leave the whole, the lemon whole. Mix those things together, open up your chicken, um, spread it open and just put some salt and pepper right into the chicken. Jam it with the lemon, onion, and the herbs. Um, you don't even have to tie the legs together. It doesn't matter. I mean, as long as everything stays in there. Uh, roast it. I mean, I, everyone has their own ways of roasting whole chicken. I kind of like to start it off at 500 for 15 to 20 minutes, but it's not necessary. You can cook it at 450, 400, you know, it'll, it'll all cook, you know. Um, I kind of like to do, do a whole chicken that way, uh, roasting high 500 for about 15, 15, 20 minutes, then turn it, then turn, maybe just turn the chicken around in the oven and then turn it down to 350 and let it finish cooking. And it just, it just provides, um, it keeps, it's another way of keeping all the moisture in the chicken as well. And, and don't forget to salt and pepper the outside, but you don't even need oil on the outside. I don't even put oil. I just salt and pepper it. That's, that's, that's one way of doing a whole chicken, that it, it, it's just to use a couple of ingredients and it makes it very, very tasty. Um, and you have the vegetables on the side. Here's your vegetables are ready. So, and, you, and, the, and the, 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 this particular kind of dressing goes really well with the chicken, the flavor of chicken. Yeah. Or I'm sure you could also marinate pieces of chicken in a dressing like this uh, let it marinate for whatever, an hour or so, and you can, uh, it's got, it, um, and you can roast it on, you know, on a sheet pan just like this in the oven, maybe at, uh, it depends on your oven, four to 450, and just keep watching it because of the sugar, um, but that's a nice way to do it too, yeah, you could use that as a marinade. For fish as well, it makes a nice marinade for a white fish. You can pan sear it, you can roast it in the oven. Any other questions? Uh, anyone else have any other questions? Anything else they want to share with us? I do. Great, please go for it. Um, so what should your vegetables look like when they're done roasting? Uh, okay. Let's see how these ones are doing. These ones, mine aren't ready yet. Okay. Okay, so mine, so the ones that I cut up uh, aren't ready, but they're going to look exactly like this. They're roasting, um, I've roasted them exactly the same way. Um, they should look like this. Can you, can you see this? I can't tell. Uh, not very well. Yes, um, but not T tell me where I should put it so you can see it better. Ah, uh, that's good. Okay. Is that good? So, so yeah. uh, you can see. Um, I mean, I've roasted them lightly, so. Uh, but they could go a little bit more than this. You kind of have to use look at it and and make sure. Like, if your oven's, for example, if you have an oven that burns everything, like you put things in the oven and then it burns the bottom of whatever you're cooking. Try to put two pans. If you have two pans the same size. I do that all the time if my oven's too hot. So, but in this case, I, I just kept my eye on it and I just, I took them out of the oven halfway through so that I could just turn them over because they were browning on the bottom side, but not the top. So 
there's a lot of things like that. You have to make things over and over again in your own oven to figure out how it works best. So okay. that's what I do. And uh, do we have any more minutes? Because I could show you the beets. Um, yeah, we still have a few more minutes. We also had another question, um, which is what other suggestions, this is from Crystal, uh, what else can you have alongside the veggies? Oh, you need to look forward to, I didn't actually have any prepared uh, today, but, uh, but yeah, you, I mean, you could, you could make uh, rice, you could make rice with vegetables in it, you could make quinoa, um, you could make uh, barley. There's so many different types of grains that, that you could even mix with those vegetables to have on the side as a side dish for, for dinner. And, maybe, and I'll, address, uh, I'll address side dishes in one of our classes for sure, like things like grains. Yeah, but we're definitely gonna do some grains as well. I have a question. Do you have specific vinegar? You use vinegar, what do you call it? vinegar? Do you have specific name? The name, the name vinegar, like all you can use it or what? What kind of, what kind of vinegar you use it? Sorry. So the question is, I think, what kind of vinegars, like yeah, what yeah, yeah. specific kind of vinegars we can use? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Let me just, I'm just pulling up some of the ones I have up here with me. Uh, okay, I have uh, some different types of vinegar here. So, you know, the, the, the topic of roasting vegetables, um, oh, you mean different vinegars for the salad? Or yeah, what, what do you use it? Because I'm, I'm confused, I don't know what to use it. Like, I never buy this one, that's why, like, oh, can you have an idea? Okay. Okay, yeah. Thank you. So, uh, I have, uh, I use balsamic vinegar. Uh, it's called balsamic vinegar. I, I also use a lot of red wine vinegar and uh, apple cider vinegar. There are lots of different kinds of vinegar. Um, uh, and I also use just plain white vinegar, uh, which is fine. Plain white vinegar works well with salad dressings. Uh, it just depends what flavor you want. They all, they all have different flavor. Um, I tend to use, um, let's say I'm roasting vegetables like I did today. Well, you saw that I squeezed the lime um, on those vegetables, but vegetables like, um, if I was going to roast peppers, I would cut, I would cut them into pieces exactly like I, I, I cut the vegetables up. But things like mushrooms, mushrooms and peppers, um, uh, eggplant, you know, you might want a little bit of, you could put olive oil, salt, pepper, put a little tiny bit of balsamic, and it really brings out the flavor of those vegetables. Um, I would mostly use, you know, apple, apple cider uh, vinegar, um, makes a really nice, there's lots of different purposes for it, but it makes a really nice light salad dressing. Um, and red wine vinegar is used in lots of different preparations. Lots of, I mean, I, I'm a, I'm from Italian background, so we use a lot of um, red wine vinegar in a lot of our foods. Um, you, they also use it to marinate meat sometimes, so to, to, make, it, to make the meat a little bit uh, not as tough. Um, there's all kinds of, did you have any more, uh, if, you had an, if you had a more specific question about the vinegar, I can always answer it. Um, next week if, you have, if I didn't explain enough uh, of uses for them. Thank you. Okay. So um, we're almost at the end. We probably have time for another question if, if anybody does have questions, but we would love to hear your feedback. Um, I just launched a quick poll, um, but you can also leave feedback in the class. Quick question on the vinegar note. If we don't have the white vinegar for tonight's recipe, what would be your next choice? Apple cider or just straight white vinegar? Um, for, for this particular dressing? Yes. For the dressing. Mm -hmm. You could use 
honestly, you could use either white, okay. white vinegar, plain white vinegar. I have some right here. Plain white vinegar would be fine as well. Okay. It would, yeah, you just have to take sure it, it, you're, you're going to want it. If you're going to do this, just it, it, or you mean but just use vinegar instead of the white wine vinegar. Oh, yes, in the recipe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yes. Sorry, I. Uh, yeah, you can use anything because it, it's such a small amount. You could use okay. plain wine. Yeah, hundred okay. percent. Would the apple cider vinegar taste better? You, I think they both will be very similar. Apple cider just has a bit of a different taste. So if you like apple cider vinegar, put the I would yeah, of course, it would taste delicious in in, in the dressing. Hello. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Who's singing? I think we just we got a glimpse of someone's background music. Oh, <laughs> um, great. Um, any other questions before we wrap up today? Uh, I can I can end off by showing them the beats. How I roast yeah, the beats. Yeah, please, please okay. do. Okay, okay. So, um, the, you can see I didn't need the parchment paper. Hold on. Ah. Okay, so this just came out of the oven. It's hot. <laughs> So I don't uh, I, I don't always wrap wrap my beets in foil. Sometimes I just put them in a, a small uh, oven proof container with a very tight fitting lid. You can do that too. You don't need to use foil, but I had foil, so I'm using foil. So basically, I just took my beets um, that I you can see. I will hold it up. I don't know if you can see it. I I roasted them whole. I didn't peel them or anything. You could season them if you want, but it didn't need anything. So now I've got these whole beets that are completely cooked. And it's, this is a beautiful way to cook beets. It really uh, provides, oh, it really provides, uh, it's the beet juice. It really provides um, a beautiful flavor. Um, although you can, you can also just peel them raw. You can eat them raw, but you can peel them raw and cut them up in even sized pieces and roast them just like I roasted everything else. And that works too. But this is great because you can actually just sort of like pull this apart with your, because it's so hot, I'm going to use a knife, but you can just, the skin comes right away. It just, it's really, really soft. Um, but it's, it's so hard. It's really hot. So yeah, like once, once, once this is cooked, this skin comes off really, really easily. And then you've got a beautiful beet. You can just cut it up. You can put a little, little bit of dressing on top. It goes really well with this dressing. It goes really well with balsamic vinegar. So you could have a nice beet, beet salad, a little bit of oil, a little bit of garlic if you liked it, a little bit of ginger, tiny, tiny bit of balsamic vinegar. You could even add a little tiny bit of soy sauce to that. Oh, it'd be delicious. Yeah, so there's so many things you can do with roasted vegetables. Yeah, so, sorry, they're too hot to handle. <laughs> but the skin comes right off. It just comes right off. It's really easy. There, see, and you can see the red beet. So. That's how you roast beet, beets, same way, but just completely covered. Amazing. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I, it's, unless anybody has anything else they want to ask or share. Um, yeah, I think I just love to see what everybody is making tonight. And I hope everybody also takes some time to get outside and enjoy what seems to be a really lovely day too. You're the best chef. This is awesome. And it's so nice to see familiar faces, but that was wicked. So I'm going to go make my dinner right now. You've inspired me. So thank you. Is that, is that Ian? It yeah. is Ian. Ian, thank you so much for watching. Of course, thank you're the best. This is so great. Awesome. It's awesome. I love seeing all the families and I love seeing members. This is awesome. Thank so you. everyone have a great night. Enjoy your dinners. Yeah. Thanks, Ian. Yeah. I, thanks so much for, 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 uh, for participating in our class. I hope to see everybody again. Amazing. Thank you, everyone. I hope you all have a really lovely evening. Um, if anyone does have questions and they want to stay on, I just saw Crystal said this one, you can feel free to stay on. We'll answer that question. Um, we are doing this every Tuesday. Uh, we'll keep sending emails. So next week, Tuesday, same time. Um, if you want to stay on for the question, feel free to, if you need to jump off, feel free to jump off 